Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow. Now, a car's 0 to 60 mile an hour time is a great way to illustrate its performance, but what are the fastest accelerating cars ever? I'm not just going to show you a bunch of brand new cars that'll all do 0 to 60 miles an hour in under three seconds. And I haven't included weird one-offs or track cars that you weren't allowed to drive on the road. I've also excluded some really old classic cars that are really slow by modern standards because... <laughs> So instead, I've gone through and found the 10 most recent production road cars that all held the title, the world's fastest accelerating car. This means that I'm gonna start with one car from the 1970s because going further back is gonna be a little bit too laborious. And whatever car broke that car's record becomes the next one on my list. You get the idea? Anyway, let's crack on with the car wow roundup of the quickest accelerating cars of all time. Buying a new car? Head to CarWow to get offers from the UK's top dealers. CarWow.co.uk, the car buying comparison site. American cars don't have much of a reputation for going round corners particularly well, but they're ace in a straight line. And one of the quickest American cars of the 1970s was the Corvette C3 LS6, mainly because it had a 7.4 litre V8 with 425 horsepower, and its body was made out of fiberglass instead of steel, so it was really, really light. Floor it, and you could do 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 5.3 seconds. Now I'm gonna put that into perspective. It's almost exactly the same time as it takes a brand new BMW 330D Touring to do 0 to 60 miles an hour. Hmm. Still, modern diesels are quick and you can bet it's much easier to launch the 3 Series though, because it gets an eight-speed automatic gearbox. The Corvette came with a four-speed manual with a really heavy clutch and obviously was rear-wheel drive. Porsche has been sticking turbos on cars to make them go faster since the 1970s. The very first turbo car they made was called the 911 930 Turbo. It got a three litre turbocharged flat six with 260 horsepower. Okay, that doesn't sound like a lot these days, but as with all 911s, having the engine in the rear meant that all the weight was pushing down on the back wheels. This gave the car lots of traction away from the line. And that's one of the reasons why it could do 0 to 60 in just 5.2 seconds, which was seriously quick back in the 1970s. Porsche gave the 930 Turbo a bit more power as it got older. So by 1984, it had a 3.3 litre flat six engine with 330 horsepower. With that engine, it could do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 4.6 seconds. That's almost exactly the same time as a brand new Porsche Macan Turbo does it now. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen, you can watch my video on the Porsche Macan Turbo where I actually test its real-world 0 to 60 mile an hour time. Go check it out. If you thought the 930 Turbo's 0 to 60 time was impressive for an old car, you ain't seen nothing yet. Next on the list is the Porsche 959. It might look a bit like another 911, but it made the 930 Turbo seem about as high-tech as an abacus. It was the first Porsche with four-wheel drive, and it also had Kevlar body panels and so many onboard computers it could probably fly the space shuttle. And its 2.8 litre twin turbo flat six had 450 horsepower, which meant it took off like a rocket too. It absolutely smashed the 930 Turbo's 0 to 60 time by a full second. It did 0 to 60 in just 3.6 seconds. That's bonkers quick, even by today's standards. It's actually faster than a brand new 911 Carrera 4 can do 0 to 60 in. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can see my in-depth video review of the new 911. If I say Bugatti, you probably think of Veyrons and Chirons, yeah? But Bugatti also made a car back in the 90s called the EB110. This wedge-shaped supercar got a 3.5 litre V12 engine with four turbos on it, because two's not enough, and one certainly is just wasting your time. As a result, it produced 560 horsepower. Good thing it also had four-wheel drive to make sure it didn't just turn its tires into smoke. This grippy setup meant that the EB110 could do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 3.4 seconds, which made it the fastest accelerating car in the world. Little fact, Michael Schumacher actually bought one. Good enough for Michael. Probably good enough for most people, eh? The EB110 didn't hold the record for very long. It was actually beaten a year later by the most famous supercar of all time, the McLaren F1. This carbon fiber three-seater didn't get a load of turbos like the Bugatti, but it still had loads of power. Its naturally aspirated 6.1 litre BMW V12 made 627 horsepower. This meant it could do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 3.2 seconds, and it carried on going until it reached 240 miles an hour. 
This meant it wasn't just the quickest car to do 0 to 60, it also had the highest top speed of any road car ever made. What's especially impressive is the fact that it was McLaren's first ever road car. Their first go at it and they just came in and smashed it. That's a bit like me doing one of these little videos and it ending up winning an Oscar. It's absolutely unbelievable, really. So it's no surprise that an F1 is worth more than 10 million pounds now, if you can find one for sale. The McLaren F1 would hang on to its record for a whole decade. And the car that eventually beat it was the Ferrari Enzo. The Enzo 6 litre, 660 horsepower, naturally aspirated V12 has a bit more power than the F1's V12. But the biggest difference was that the Enzo got a robotized manual automatic gearbox with paddles instead of a gear lever and a clutch pedal. This meant it could bang through the gears faster than any human. And of course, it had a launch control system. This meant the Enzo could do 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 3.1 seconds. The only problem was that you couldn't keep launching an Enzo all day. That would just knacker the clutch in the robotized gearbox. And you can imagine just how much that will cost to replace. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner up there, you can watch me race a Ferrari Enzo against a Ferrari LaFerrari. Or is it just called LaFerrari Ferrari? I don't know, just check out the video, it's blooming amazing. One of my favorite videos ever. The Ferrari Ento was designed to be fast around racetrack, but the next car on this list was all about just going fast in a straight line, the good old fashioned American way. It's called the SSC Ultima Aero. Yeah, it's quite catchy, that's why no one remembers it. But back in 2005, it was the USA's answer to all those flashy European supercars. It didn't get some revy naturally aspirated V12, nor a high tech flat six turbo. Instead, it got a good old 6.3 liter supercharged V8. Yeehaw, boy! Sorry. But <laughs> don't go thinking it was down on power. This mental creation made 798 horsepower. So much. And it sent all this power to the rear wheels through an old school five-speed manual gearbox. So you had to nail the gear shift perfectly. If you did, the SSC would do 0 to 60 miles an hour in an incredible 2.8 seconds. I wonder how many people actually managed that though, getting that launch right. Probably very few. Unfortunately, the SSC didn't get to enjoy being the quickest accelerating car in the world for very long. Because later in 2005, Bugatti launched the Veyron. You probably already know that the Veyron was designed to beat the McLaren F1's 240 mile an hour top speed record, which it did. It could do 253 miles an hour. But making a car go really fast also makes it accelerate like a bullet. And the Veyron's quad turbo 8 litre W16 engine made 1,001 horsepower. So it was the most powerful engine ever put in a production road car. And its four wheel drive system and dual clutch automatic gearbox with launch control meant it could do 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 2.5 seconds. 2.5 seconds. Madness. But all this engineering didn't come cheap. The Veyron cost more than a million pounds when it was new. But you know what they say, you get what you pay for, right? And with the Veyron, you got the quickest accelerating car in the world and the one with the highest top speed ever. So probably worth a million quid, if you've got a million quid to spare on a car. Any sane person would look at a Veyron and go, right lads, you know, I reckon we did a good job there. We can all retire, but not Bugatti. They decided it needed to be even faster. So in 2016, they went back to the drawing board and cooked up the Chiron. This used the same basic chassis as the Veyron, but Bugatti revised all its aerodynamics and gave it some more power, a lot more power. The Chiron's eight litre quad turbo W16 engine now made 1500 horsepower. That's 500 horsepower more. Half as much again as the original Veyron. This meant it could blast from 0 to 60 miles an hour in just 2.4 seconds. Anyway, Bugatti's just built a version of the Chiron that will do more than 300 miles an hour. It's called the 300 Plus. That car's incredible. And if you click on the pop out banner up there, you can see me going for a passenger ride in it. <laughs> it's madness, watch it. Finally, then we come to the quickest accelerating car currently on sale. Now everyone knows that electric cars can be seriously fast off the line, but it's still pretty amazing to think that the car that beat the Chiron's 0 to 60 mile an hour time was the Tesla Model S Performance. The old Tesla Model S P100D was blooming quick. It would do 0 to 60 in 2.5 seconds, so the same as the original Veyron. But the latest model with cheetah stance lets you do 0 to 60 miles an hour in 2.3 seconds. That's in a four door family saloon that's eco-friendly. It's bonkers. And it's all down to the way that electric motors work. 
They produce a load of power and torque, and all this torque is available from zero RPM. That's why they launch so hard, because there is no delay when you hit the accelerator, they just get straight down to the business. And that business is showing petrol power who's the boss. But who's the boss when it comes to electric car drag racing over the standing quarter mile? You want to find out whether it's the Tesla Model S or whether it's the Porsche Taycan Turbo S? Click on the pop-out banner up there to watch my drag race. It's a very close one. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, comment below of any kind of other videos you'd like us to do. If you want to watch some more videos, click on the windows there. And if you click on the box, you can download the CarWow app. It's completely free. You can use it to like, browse all our reviews and see how much money we can save you on a new car. On average, we can save £3,600. That's right. Also, it has a special number plate reader, so you can scan any car's number plate and it'll tell you how much that car is currently worth. Download it. It's completely free.